Friday, happy Friday. Good morning, Ginny. Welcome to Friday. Today we're going to be diving into a Netflix series. This series recently just dropped their season two, and I would like to talk about it with you guys. Today, we're gonna be talking about Ginny and Georgia. Listen, I wasn't gonna do a video on it. I was like, it's, it is what it is. I'm not gonna do a video on it. When the first season dropped, it was, it was a lot to handle. I thought it was gonna be like a throwaway Netflix show. I thought, you know, maybe a few people will watch it. It'd probably get a se season two and it would kind of fade out. No, season one was epic. And by epic, I do not mean the quality of the show. I have many, many issues with the first season, but this show, was talked about. Like when I mean talked about, I mean talked about. Like everybody was talking about Ginny and Georgia and the mess that it was. And then to top it all off, it had a scandal surrounding it. Season one drops and there is a line of dialogue. A character says to another character, you go through men faster than Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift did not like this. She sent a paragraph tweet with it, ending it with the best thing I've ever read in my entire life. Happy Women's History Month, I guess. Woo! Taylor Swift is nowhere to be seen after that Happy Women's History Month, I guess. Poof! she's gone as much as i'm like yeah taylor swift like can say what she wants like there's no like stopping her but the fact that she didn't say anything when the actress of the show who doesn't even write the show was getting like really racist comments thrown at her and death threats like happy women's history month i guess like I, why would you end the tweet like that and then just to let your fans hate on this young woman Something's not adding up. But this only brought more attention to the show and we got a season two and season two just dropped this month and oh boy, was it a ride. We're gonna be talking about it all. We're gonna be talking about season one and season two. We're gonna be talking about characters. We're gonna be talking about plot lines and we're gonna be talking about all the issues that Ginny and Georgia has. I am so excited. Putting aside Taylor Swift and Women's History Month, Let's dive into Ginny and Georgia. The show has a very similar energy to like Gilmore Girls. It's very like slice of life type of show, but it has this big twist, which also involves crime. So it's like, we're getting into Riverdale territory, which I'm not mad at. The first season was definitely not that great. It definitely had a, this is so bad, it's good um, appeal to it. I think when it comes to the high schoolers in the show, so Ginny and her friends, they give them such bad dialogue that it makes you take their story um, less serious. When a lot of their story points for the teenagers are very good story points. They just have a bad execution. And it's not necessarily the actor's fault either. It's a major dialogue problem. Season one was difficult. Um, and that mainly goes for dialogue surrounding, like I said, the teenagers. The show has an oversaturation of pop culture references and um, young teenage slang, which just doesn't communicate properly through the screen. It's not the best idea to include so many pop culture references or topical um, zingers because they will be expired probably a month after you write them. I think they do such an oversaturation that even now we're like, this is so like three months ago. Like I can tell the exact point in time you wrote this, like 2021 20, February, you wrote that then. We're gonna speed run through some characters, some side characters. So we already know we got Ginny, Georgia, Austin. Austin is a little boy in the family. We got Paul, Paul's the mayor. We have Joe. Joe is coffee shop owner and he is also long time um, um, friendly interaction with Georgia. He met her when they were in high school and they had a very brief encounter um, of niceties exchanged and no one knows it yet. We have Maxine. We have Abby, we have Nora. This is the girl group. This is the girl group. They refer to themselves as Mang. I couldn't tell you what made them choose that decision, but I'll let them have it. We have Marcus. Marcus is Maxine's twin sister. Sister Ian and we- Brother Ian. He's brooding, he draws. He's almost kind of like, oh my God, he's kind of like Xavier from Wednesday. Keep that in mind for later. The only other teen boy that I really know of is Hunter. There's a bunch of other stragglers within the mix. 
think there's a guy named Press. We also have one more adult, which is Ginny's father, Zion. Fine man, fine ass man. Oh my God. Um, Ginny and Hunter get together in the first season and it's almost unbearable to watch. It's the most awful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Hunter is so cringy. That's the only way I can describe it. He's weird, he sings, he tap dances, and not in a fun glee way, in a weird way. He's weird, you're a weirdo. And they have a full on dialogue moment, a, a, a argument later on. They, they think they're so multicultural and so diverse for being this mixed race couple, which they are. I'll give them that. They have one of the worst scenes that's ever been written where they talk about their oppression, which has got to be the most awful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Because if we're gonna play that game, let's do it. Oppression Olympics, let's go. I didn't need to see it. Could have ruined the entire show. Like it almost, it it's so close to doing it because it is such a bad scene. It is so poorly written. All of their scenes together seem very forced, which is like what they're trying to do because they're trying to prove that like Ginny and Hunter should not be together. Ginny and Marcus should be together because Marcus and Ginny have chemistry. And he also climbs through her window and like lo they lost their virginity together when he climbed through her window, which was like a really weird scene. And she thought that he was just taking her virginity, but really they were both losing their virginity and I hated it. In the first season, you got him cheating on his girlfriend, Padma, for no damn reason. Like he didn't even know Jenny before he started like making out with her or like making moves on her. Like he didn't even know her. It wasn't even like they even tried to not do that. Like he like literally did not try. He was like, I'm gonna ruin some lives today and I'm going to cheat, unwarranted. Like he didn't even know Ginny. He just did it. Like men are trash. He is trash. Like it wasn't even like they like started hanging out and like started developing feelings. He just like went for it. He was like, I'm gonna have sex with this girl. I don't even know her. Not even sure I like her. I'm gonna do it though. I'm, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Why would you start a plot like that? Like I, I get it. They were trying to be like, oh, like they shouldn't, but they will. Like it's like kind of forbidden, but it's like, but like someone needs to tell someone that like forbidden love is not that fun when they're like cheating. The first season kind of goes by and it's fine. It's a show. It tries to do a lot at once, which I get it because it's the first season, but it is a lot going on. And it's trying to be like, we're the show that can be your slice of life and tackle hard subjects too. Like a boy meets world type of thing where like we can be your slice of life and tackle issues like racism and mental health. And as much as I do appreciate that, I think it just seemed like a lot for the first season. They were like teen mom, biracial daughter, predominantly white town, ex-husband dead. Like it was like a lot to kind of like get the point across in the first season. For me, that's why I ended up not liking it that much. But in the second season, since they have that groundwork, it does pay off. Anyways, moving on to the second season because not much happens in the first season other than Ginny finding out that her mom murdered her ex-husband and being really sad about it and finding a gun and being like, oh my God, I don't know who my mom is, I'm really scared. And Marcus getting into a motorcycle accident and then Ginny running away at the end of the season to go live with her papa Zion. Paul proposes to Georgia, which is just like boring. Like Paul is fine, but he's boring. Especially when you have prime candidates like Joe and Zion. Are you kidding me? Those delicious hunky men. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You have those delicious hunky men and you make her go be with the mayor, but it's worth it. It'll be worth it. Joe will be worth it. I'm, I'm so sorry. Joe is is gonna be worth this wait. And one other major plot point of the first season was Ginny's mental health and seeing it decline throughout the season and seeing her struggle with self-harm. Today's video is sponsored by Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals straight to your doorstep. With the new year, you have so many new goals to tackle and whether that is eating better or even just saving time, Factor is here to help you achieve those goals. With Factor, you can skip the grocery trip and all the food prep because Factor ready to eat meal kits are ready in just two minutes. I work from home, I'm always home, and there is no better feeling than finishing filming at like 12 or 1 a.m. and having meals in my fridge ready to eat in just two minutes. Don't have to 
try to find some place that's open to deliver food. I don't have to scrounge with something up in the kitchen. I can just have this, pop it in the microwave two minutes, and now I'm eating. And I'm and I and I don't have to clean anything afterwards. Like that's the life. That's the dream. And Factor makes this super easy. They have tons and tons of options for you to choose from, no matter what diet or nutrition plan you're trying to follow. Whether that's a keto diet, whether that's calorie smart, whether that's vegan or veggie options, or protein plus meals, Factor has got you covered. Get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, there really is no... Achieve and maintain your goals this year with Factor. Get America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and start saving time, eating well, and living your best year ever. So this means there's a wide array of meals you can choose from. I love switching in between brands. And now you guys, the viewers, can use both services at a discount with me. You guys can go to factor75.com or use my code trendlevel60 to get 60% off your first factor box today. This second season does such a good job setting up its main plot points. We have such tension between Ginny and Georgia great we have a wonderful foundation to start the season this good back and forth of um bantering and this complex relationship between jenny and georgia i also forgot to mention in the second season that the character bracia takes on a way bigger role and i was actually very excited she actually had a really interesting and entertaining plot with her being in the play she had a love interest she had a way bigger role in this season than she did in the first season so i was really excited to see that and i'm hoping in the third season she gets an even bigger arc two of the characters that i really loved in the second season were abby and bracia and i hope we get to develop their plot lines a lot more in the third second season also transforms jenny's character majorly she goes from a very docile um shy more more introverted character trying to find her footing in the first season to more of a confident outcast in the second season, which is really fascinating to watch. In this season, we kind of dial back on what she's dealing with. So she's dealing with finding out her mother killed someone for her and also coming to terms with her self-harming. And in the beginning of the season, she confides in her dad, Zion, that she is self-harming. Best part about this show is that they never show the self-harming. They insinuate what's going on on screen, but they never show it. It is one of the most crucial parts I consider to be when depicting self -harming harm i think showing self-harm depictions and the gore of it is always always unnecessary this season does such a good job tackling the subject of self-harm and these feelings that Ginny struggles with it's um very sad it's hard to watch every scene that showed about self-harm is extremely hard to watch it is super emotional and i think that they did a really good job showcasing it and showing both of the parents reactions to what this is and that's the first time i've ever watched something that in a while that depicted um, these thoughts and th th this um, behavior that i really related to and i was like no i've literally lived that so well done. The show is like very unserious, but those scenes, low, like they meant a lot to me. I thought they were so powerful and it could have been really bad. And I think they did a really good job on it. Moving on from that, going into a little lighter topic, Max and Nora are really mad because they're really mad at all their friends. They're really mad at Abby and Jenny because Abby told Maxine about Ginny and Marcus, but she knew about it for a little bit, so that's why they're mad at Maxine. And then Maxine is mad at Ginny because she was with her twin. And that's just like so difficult. It's just so hard. It's so hard to be the sibling of your best friend's lover. It is so hard. It's not, it's not. And I'm gonna like get angry right now. I've watched so many different things where the best friend's brother thing is like such a big deal. It's like the biggest deal in the world and like earth shatters. You have betrayed me. Life cannot go on if you date my mother effing brother. It's like not that big of a deal, but she like 
fucking flips out and she's a complete bitch in the second season for like a few episodes, which is a few episodes too long because you should not be this angry over this. And that's something that I felt while watching this entire show. As much as I did like a lot of the like scenes that they portrayed, like Ginny and Georgia and the self-harm aspect, Dude, so much of this stuff they are getting so angry about. I'm like, nothing is happening. Season two, we finally get Joe realizing, both Joe and Georgia realizing who the other person was. I think Georgia knew for a while. The material is there. The material is there and you need to do something with it quick, quickly. Oh my God, the first, like, we, we, we're like, we're dying for this. We're pining for this slow burn. And we get Joe sex scene. And the first Joe sex scene we get is with Cynthia. What? What? Come on, guys. You have got to be shitting me. I just don't think Cynthia is a very necessary character. I guess because she ties into Georgia. But it, for her, to, for the first sex scene of Joe, hot ass Joe, to be with Cynthia was just devastating. In this season, Marcus and Ginny are together and stronger than ever. They are doing it all over the place. And he is going out with her friends and being social. And that's a big thing for him because he's not social, <laughs> right? great i liked them better in the first season only because it was like kind of more pining so it kind of made it better but i digress i still liked them in the second season they end up breaking up at the end of the season and then like slightly getting back together because marcus is like suffering from like depression and he like also doesn't want to hold jenny back because he made a promise to georgia that he wouldn't hold jenny back because georgia's like you're a small town boy like you're her high school love but you're not the one for her bitch and i was like damn for a story i think it it, it made sense for like the end of the season to kind of have this like pillar in her life fall i think that made sense for jenny's character Think it's gonna make a lot more sense in season three if they get a season three hopefully a surprising character that i didn't think i would like that much this season was actually abby i loved her character i think in the first season she was very similar to maxine in the ways that i didn't like her just kind of like not enjoying all that and in this season when she's distant from maxine she's way more likable way more likable and I think she also has a really interesting character arc because she is kind of that mirror ball character kind of that Will Byers of the story so I really like that and I really like those types of characters and I'm excited to see what happens with her in the next season she has a lot of potential and she has a lot going on that kind of falls back in the shadows but if you're really paying attention to her like, she's got a lot going on. I thought she got treated like shit in this season, though. Mirrorball, I, I, I need something better for you, quickly, because I can't watch you hook up with that man anymore. I can't do it. Another great addition to the season was Austin's dad. Austin's dad gets released from jail. He was in jail for fraud and embezzlement, and he starts to see Austin um, without Georgia's permission, and then ends up trying to threaten Georgia and get money from her because she framed him, put him into jail. Great addition. I thought it was really cool to see the interactions between Zion, Paul, and Gil. Later on, Ginny and Austin find Gil trying to hurt Georgia and threaten her, and they all together as a family stop that man. And by all together, I mean Austin takes that gun that's been there and shoots shoots him in the arm. Austin was so real for that. Like I was like so excited. I love that whole scene of them like covering up the crime. I hope that Ginny and Georgia turns into like a whole crime cover up story of this family committing crimes and getting away with it. The best part of the show, like <laughs> that was like the best part of the season. Lo I, even though like Paul is like not a bad character, I think they, I hope they just phase him out because he's not very necessary to me. Like he's, very unnecessary. Nora, I think Nora can be gone. Pretty much all the teenage boys, except for Marcus, are very unnecessary. Hunter, Brody, Press, like, we can, <laughs> we can exit now. Like, you don't do anything for us. You add nothing. Uh, thanks. I think, I, I hate to say it, 
Max's love life is so boring. Her love life adventures, not at all entertaining. And I hate, it pains me to say that. It pains me to say that because she's the only lesbian character and it's the only lesbian relationship we have on the show. But, oh my God, it is so boring. Her whole deal with Sophie was not at all fascinating to me. Kind of just made me cringe, which I get. But like, why are you putting the only lesbian romance and making it awkward and making it cringy? Like the straight couples have a lot of non-awkward moments. Granted, they have like, Ginny and Marcus had like major awkward moments, but they also have some cute, good chemistry moments. Why can't a lesbian couple have that? Oh, because it's including Maxine and she bothers me. There is something very interesting about Ginny and Georgia and the, and the way that it is curated to be such an um, fascinating train wreck to where like the first season really doesn't leave you thinking there's much potential. And like in the nicest way possible, I say that because it really doesn't make you believe that there is anything good to come from this story. And then the second season drops and it is very, very like fascinating. Like it's so interesting and the plot lines are lining up better and the, and, and the dialogue is slightly better. And then, the, you know, these characters are getting more fascinating in ways that I didn't believe was possible. And I'm very much almost hoping and begging for a third season because I think it would do really well which we haven't seen many shows depicting a a longevity of a career a lot of these shows look like they're gonna phase out within a season or two and I really do see Ginny and Georgia kind of um lasting a while um to have that longevity and that you know household name like you know you got Degrassi uh, the Secret Life of American Teenager, Gossip Girl, One Tree Hill, like Gilmore Girls, all these types of shows that lasted a pretty long time and really made a name for themselves. I haven't seen a show depict that type of longevity until this show. Um, and you like Euphoria, obviously, but that's like, you know, very different show. But it's been a while since we've gotten like a 90210, cringy, very unaware teen show that is just awful, cheesy, and dramatic, overly dramatic. Like it has been a while since we've gotten that. Like everyone thought it was gonna be Riverdale and then Riverdale turned Supernatural, which is also great in its own sense of having, you know, Supernatural teen shows, but it's not that slice of life that, you know, we've been lacking. I wanna see what they can do. And I am surprised that I like it so much. I think if they didn't do that one Taylor Swift line, I think Taylor Swift would have loved the show. And I would have loved to see her opinions on it. Cause I know she probably does like it she's eating up those marcus and jenny scenes because she's like she knows it she gets it and i, and I wish she could enjoy it uh, uh, publicly too i wish that for her that was my whole jenny and georgia video i know this was a little bit different from what i usually do this was kind of more similar to my stranger things uh season one through three recap um i like doing these videos i like sitting down just chatting ranting about you know, a show. I really like this type of video. Let me know if you guys like it. Cause I would love to do this with like a bunch of different shows and just kind of get to girl talk it with you guys. Please let me know what you guys think about this freaking season of Ginny and Georgia. I know I didn't talk about every single point cause there's not enough time in the world to talk about every single point and every single scene and yada, yada, yada. But I would really like to know what you guys think and what your favorite character moments were, what your favorite character was, you know, what your favorite plot point was. I would love to know it all. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Next time. Bye.